Hello, this is Jack Yost, your business professor with Chapter 8, Managing Human Resources, as part of our course, our management training lecture, uh, Management 323, Management Theory and Practice. Let me tell you about a surprise that I got when I had the chance to work with human resource management. Uh, your business professor, uh, a number of years ago, did a tour of duty as a bureaucrat in state government. Part of my portfolio was managing uh, the human resources functions of the 12 agencies that were in our secretariat uh, in the governor's office. In our very first meeting with the with these uh, agency heads representing uh, the 14,000 employees in the secretariat, I asked them uh, what was one thing, one thing that we could do to start uh, to help the, the, the state employees. What one thing did they want? Now, I could only handle one thing at a time anyway, so I just wanted to hear what was the one thing that the most pressing concern. I thought that uh, government employees, bureaucrats, they would behave like union employees and, and want more time off, greater benefits, more sick time, uh, more money, and all kinds of extra, extra goodies. I was wrong. What, what these government employees wanted was not more free stuff, but what they wanted was more education. They wanted more training. They wanted more classes. They wanted to sharpen their skills. They wanted to get better at their jobs. They wanted to learn more. And I, I was surprised. I have a, my undergraduate degrees in elementary education, and I thought that, that, that nobody wanted to learn anything beyond elementary sc school. So I, I was surprised. And we were able to uh, arrange some modest funding and, 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 and open up some more education opportunities. And this made the, the uh, directors happy and it made the employees happy. It was one of the first of many surprises that I would get uh, overseeing uh, uh, the uh, uh, human resource function for the secretariat. Um, let's walk through a, a couple of learning uh, objectives and we'll see where else I got surprised. Our first learning objective would be to discuss how companies use human resource management to gain competitive advantage, give reasons why companies both recruit internally and externally for new hires, understand various methods for selecting new employees and equal employment opportunity laws, evaluate the importance of spending on training and development, that, the surprise I got, explain alternatives for who appraises an employee, employee's performance, Describe the fundamental aspects of a reward system and summarize how unions and labor laws influence human resources management. Uh, one of the buzzwords that uh, anchor acronyms I want us to learn for our vocabulary is human resource management uh, or HRM. This is a system of organizational activities to attract, develop, and motivate an effective and qualified workforce, also known as talent, human capital, or personnel management, people. Strategic human resources management creates values, rare, difficult, organized. Has three stages. Human re HR planning has three stages of planning, programming, and evaluating. The HR, human resources, the HR planning process. Demand forecasts determine how many and what type of people are needed. The supply of labor, how many and what type of employees the, or the organization act will actually have. The HR planning process. Job analysis. This is a tool for determining what is done on a given job and what should be done on that job. Staffing the organization. Recruitment. The development of a pool of applicants for jobs in an organization. Uh, recruiting both internal inside the organization and external from outside the organization. Selection. Choosing from among qualified applicants to hire into an organization. And selection methods. Applications and resumes, interviews, reference checks, background checks, personality tests, drug testing, cognitive ability tests, performance tests, and integrity tests. Interviews. Structured interview. This is a selection technique that involves asking all the applicants the same questions and comparing their responses to a standardized set of answers. Assessment Center. This is a manager, managerial performance test in which candidates participate in a variety of exercises situations. Reliability and validity. Reliability 
is the consistency of test scores over time and across alternative measures. Validity. The degree to which a selection test predicts or correlates with job performance. Criterion content. Validity. Criterion related validity refers to the degree to which a test actually predicts or correlates with job performance. Content validity concerns the degree to which the selection tests measure a representative sample of the knowledge, skills, and abilities required for the job. Uh, KSAs for knowledge, skills, and ability. Remember that. Sometimes employees must be let go. Nice word for firing. Outplacement. The process of helping people who have been dismissed from the company regain employment elsewhere, outside the company. Termination. At will. This is the legal concept that an employee may be terminated for any reason. Advice on termination. Do give as much warning as possible for mass layoffs. The bad news does not get better with time. Do sit down one-on-one -on -one with the individual in a private office, uh, preferably the, uh, the employee's office. Do, a, do complete a termination se session within 15 minutes. Do not, this is not to be dragged out along. This is not a negotiation. Don't allow time for debate during a termination session. Don't make personal comments when firing someone. Legal issues and equal opportunity, equal employment opportunity. Adverse impact. When a seemingly neutral employment practice has a disproportionately negative effect on a protected group. Equal opportunity laws. Training and development. Training is teaching lower level employees or entry level employees how to perform their present jobs and development is a, is a bit more sophisticated. Development is helping managers and professional employees learn the broad skills needed, additional skills needed for their present jobs and for future jobs. This is quite an investment. This is where I got surprised in my work. Training and development needs assessment. So this is an analysis identifying the jobs, people, and departments for which training is necessary. Uh, per the percentage of companies increasing spending on specific training areas in, in, in 2011. Uh, a few years ago, 27% of, of, of companies surveyed um, did training in managerial, uh, for, for management and for supervisory uh, positions. About, about a third of companies spent money on management training, much like we're doing now. Types of training. Orientation training. This is training designed to induce, introduce new employees to the company and to, and to familiarize them with policies, procedures, culture, and the like. Team training. This is training that provides employees with the skills and perspectives they need to collaborate with others. Diversity training. These are programs that focus on identifying and, re and reducing hidden biases against people with differences and developing the skills needed to manage a diversified workforce. Performance Appraisal PA is an assessment of an, employment of an employee's job performance against a standard. Types of appraisals. A trait, behavior results. A performance Appraisal a Management by Objectives, the acronym is MBO, Management by objectives. This is a process in which objectives set by a subordinate and a supervisor must be reached within a given time period. Performance appraisal. 360 degree appraisal or a 360 degree evaluation is the process of using multiple sources of appraisal to gain a comprehensive perspective on one's performance. Um, normally, I, I use these quite a bit and uh, we will use one in this in this class and this is where the traditionally where the subordinate evaluates the superior where the subordinate where the staffer evaluates his boss factors influencing the wage mix internal factors include the organization's comprehensive compre uh, compensation policy the worth of each job the employees relative worth and the employers the bosses ability to pay the budget. External factors include the conditions of the labor market, the area wage rates, the cost of living, the use of collective bargaining, and legal requirements. 
pay structure. Employee benefits. Cafeteria benefit program, an employee benefit program in which the employees choose from a menu, hence cafeteria, a menu of options to create a, to create a benefit package tailored individually to meet their needs. Flexible benefit programs. Benefit programs in which employees are given credits to spend on benefits that fit their unique needs. Pay and benefits must meet legal requirements. A comparable worth is the principle of equal pay for different jobs of equal worth. Labor relations. This is the system of relations between workers and management. Workers being the labor. Why do workers vote for or against a union or being unionized? The first is economic factors. Second is job satisfaction or dissatisfaction. Number three, belief that union, belief that unions have the power to obtain desired benefits through collective bargaining, and for the image of the union. A collective bargaining, union shop. A union shop is an organization with a union and a union security clause specifying that workers must join the union after a set period of time. Contrasted to that is the right to work, which is legislation that allows employees to work without having to join a union. We'll, we'll stop at this point here in our, in our chapter, and I uh, invite you to read the text for our next chapter and to submit the assignment, and I look forward to talking with you again.